what's going on with Afghanistan. For 20 years, there has been countless of children and family programs that have talked about parenting to help parents better protect their children, whilst missing the larger political context where the countries that are intervening in Afghanistan are actually the thing that's um, making children unsafe. It's the violence. Join us for the fifth conversation in the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute, confronting paternalism, colonialism, and racism in the design and implementation of child and family programs in humanitarian and development settings. This conversation is moderated by Mark Canavera and features Zarlosh Talamzai and Tina Haider. These experts interrogate our assumption and biases, which are rooted in paternalism and colonialism, which have caused harm in the design and implementation of child and family programs. The whole sector of child development is impacted by paternalism. If we look around the world when programming does take place, we do see a set of assumptions that frame those interventions, specifically around the need to improve parents and parenting skills and that there's a need to find resources, interventions, packages from outside. We unpack biases and assumptions about women and family in the fields of early childhood and child protection programming. These programs may in fact be rendering women powerless by conceiving them as powerless um, and that this is a, a feminized space that does not actually acknowledge women's important roles in family and community life. I grew up in, an, in, in the context of Afghan culture where women have very few public roles but they have a certain level of agency and power in their own homes. When I was growing up I could see how this community around me created protection, extremely difficult circumstances and as a practitioner I can see how protective this collective approach was for me. And if you juxtapose this experience against some of the programs that run globally, you can begin to see the differences where the concept of nuclear family is imposed on communities that are essentially collective and misses the kind of the solidarity that women create in those kind of societies to protect themselves and their children. I see the power of bringing up children in a community is just not acknowledged. It's not acknowledged in funding, it's not acknowledged in terms of how programs, organisations prioritise uh, investments in children and families. And we discuss how a political framing must be front and centre in designing programming. Children spaces are often seen as so depoliticised. They are some of the most politically active spaces that, that I think you can work in. When communities are investing in the future and their children, there is a space for change, there's capacity for change there. Before we can even start talking about the design of particular programs in this space, we need to talk about the language that we use to describe child development in the first place. So the way that we talk about child development is as if it happens in a vacuum away from the politics and it doesn't. These experts share examples and strategies for moving forward. The first step to, to constructing programs that meet families and children and communities as they are is to really interrogate our own assumptions about the communities that we're working in. What we try to do at RTI is to really, first of all, begin from the perspective that people come with all kinds of experiences and those experiences can have multiple impacts on them and their children and that there is both stress and adversity present in families but there's also resilience and strengths and, and ways that families work together to keep themselves safe. The notion of partnership and the practice of partnership is incredibly important. So for the Refugee Trauma Initiative that translates into facilitators who deliver some of the child care and early childhood development services in the communities in which they're working are from the refugee community. And we reimagine a way forward. There's an industry that surrounds development and humanitarian structures. And I think we need to examine our values, our norms, our assumptions within those industries and how we're self-perpetuating and how sometimes the contradictions, the tensions where the language is about empowerment, it is about a language of emancipation, and it does the exact opposite. 
the perspective of people that needs to be central to program design and shifting that paradigm is people who use the services, people who are in need of humanitarian protection. Humanitarian aid agencies don't stay with the countries forever. Like go in, come out, go in, come out. And so it's the communities themselves that actually manage emergencies and they deal with the fallout. If you give communities the resources to manage their problems, they often make the best choices for themselves. Visit the Reconstructing Children's Rights Institute website to join an entire series seeking to dismantle unjust systems.